Sterling Heights Public Library. My name is Brent, and today we're going to make uh, beef burgundy. I know, French food, right? Um, relax. It's basically beef stew with wine. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, come on down. I'll, we'll go over the ingredients. Uh, I'll do a little bit of prep work here in a moment, and um, then we'll uh, show you how to put it together. So we're going to start off with about a pound of beef. Um, this here is top sirloin. I got a good price on it. Nice piece of meat. Not the only thing you can use. Um, chuck would work fine for this. You can use round. Uh, we're going to be doing a technique on this called braising, uh, which is going to be cooking it um, for a long time uh, at a relatively low temperature in a covered vessel with a small amount of liquid. Um, so that's going to tenderize even a more tough piece. Um, this one's going to come together really nicely though. I got a couple of strips of bacon. A couple of nice big carrots, about a half a pound here. Uh, got a nice onion here. A couple of cloves of garlic. About a half pound of mushrooms. A bay leaf, some thyme, some salt, pepper, and some wine. Um, the wine you use is not uh, super particular about exactly what you're going to use. You want a dry red that you like. Uh, doesn't have to be anything expensive. Okay. So um, I've done a little prep work here, and I just want to kind of go over how I cut things here. So the onion is in a relatively large dice. Um, this is going to be something that's going to go on the stove for a good while, a um, couple hours for sure. So we don't want to go too tiny on anything. Uh, the meat is in nice, good-sized chunks. Um, these are probably large bite size, but they're going to be really tender when we're all done. So if you get them that are a little too big, you can always cut them. Uh, garlic's in a rough chop here. I got a fairly um, good sized cross cut on the carrots. Not huge, but still bite size. Um, mushrooms, I just sliced uh, in a nice uh, thick slice. You can quarter them. You could leave them whole if you wanted to. Uh, and thyme, um, basically I just peeled that off of the, uh, the stems and uh, gave that a rough chop as well. One thing about um, doing mushrooms, when you're washing mushrooms, um, you'll see they sell mushroom brushes. Generally speaking, you know, yes, you do want to clean mushrooms before you use them, but most of the dirt that's on them should just, you know, brush right off. Um, a light rinse is really all that they need. If you see some stuff sticking to them, just pick it off. Um, once these things are wet, they don't store. So uh, don't wash them until just before you're ready to use them. And word of caution, they are a little slippery when they're wet. So we're going to bring all this over. Oh, and the bacon. Um, I just did that into cross cuts. We're going to render this um, first in order to get the fat for browning the beef. So uh, follow me over to the stove and we'll show you how to make it. Okay, so what I've got here, I have got a small Dutch oven. This is about a five quart. Um, so uh, you can spend a tremendous amount of money on these things if you get the fancy European ones. You don't have to buy the, you know, the, the fancy French one. Um, something like this here can be had very reasonably if you look around a little bit. It uh, doesn't have to be enameled either. You can use the, the straight up Dutch oven. Uh, this will also work in any good size heavy bottom pot. Uh, you can even do all your browning in a skillet if you want to. So I'm just warming this thing up over medium heat. Um, and we're going to start off by rendering the bacon. So just gonna pop that in there. We don't want to crank the heat up too high on this immediately. We don't want to burn it. Okay. So uh, I think you can see the uh, bacon coming along in here. Uh, we don't need to take this all the way to fully crisp, but you see how it's kind of um, foaming up like this? We're getting a little bit of brown in the bottom of the pan. This is a good thing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use a slotted spoon to just kind of pull this bacon out of here. Because I don't really need to take that any further. I don't want to burn that. And then we're going to use the fat from that to brown the meat. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of slide that in there. It's probably going to sizzle pretty good. So Okay, now I'm just putting the cover on that for a second because if I don't, you probably won't be able to hear me. What we're looking for on this is a nice um, brown color. Uh, we're going to leave it pretty much alone. Um, I'll 
take the cover back off of this here in a minute uh, until it's ready to flip. So don't be fooling around with this uh, too much while it's going. And don't overcrowd your pan. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see how the, um, the pieces are just barely touching? You got a little bit of space still on the bottom there. If you put those too close together, um, you're not going to get enough heat coming into them, and you're going to wind up stewing it rather than browning it. So um, I'm going to let this go for a few minutes with the cover off, uh, and we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're back. And what we're looking for on browning meat, can you see that nice brownish color there? We're not looking for, you know, just kind of, you know, grayish like this. We definitely want a brown color on the bottom. So when you start to see that, and you can see that there's a little bit of liquid in here, there's not a ton. We can go ahead and we can start giving that a nice stir, flipping everything over. Put the cover back on this just for again for a moment just so you can kind of hear me a little bit better um so we're looking for that nice brown color there's a reaction going on there when you start getting protein in contact with nice nice high heat um it's called a maillard reaction you're building not only that color but you're also building a lot of depth of flavors while you're doing that um so we want to keep this going i'm going to take the um, lid back off of this we do not want to steam this we're going to um, go for a couple more minutes on that before we uh, check it again so there's the lid off, and we're going to keep going. Okay, so you can see that we don't really have a lot of liquid in here right now. The meat has, uh, you know, got a nice brown color to it, and um, any juices that released have pretty much uh, evaporated off. So we've been developing some nice flavor here. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt here at this point. Not a ton. You can always add more. It's really hard to take it back out, though, but you do want to season as you go. So, a couple of nice grinds of black pepper. Go ahead and throw in a nice healthy pinch of that thyme. Give this all stir for a second. Now we're going to start adding in the vegetables. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put in carrots garlic and the onions. We're going to hold off on mushrooms for a minute. Give that a nice stir. We just want to kind of get this started. We don't need to cook it all the way at this point. We want to get a little bit of that direct heat on the onions and the carrots. Start developing a little bit of flavor there too. So this has been going for another couple minutes. We're going to go ahead and add the bacon back in. If you want all that flavor. We're going to throw in the bay leaf. And the mushrooms. And give this a stir. We're going to let it go for just a couple more minutes. And we're going to add the wine and put the cover on and turn the heat down. Okay, so this has been going for a few more minutes. You can see that the mushrooms are starting to um, collapse a little bit. Uh, the onions are starting to soften. We're still a long way from cooked here. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add the wine. I got about a cup here. Now, classically, you know, beef burgundy would be made with burgundy wine. Again, if you don't want to pay French prices, um, domestic wine is fine. Uh, if you're looking for something very similar to a Burgundy, a Pinot Noir is basically the variety that they use in Burgundy. So that'll work out really well. Uh, other ones that work really well, you got Zinfandel or a, um, Cabernet works really well. Uh, any of those. Um, you can even use a Merlot if you want, but it doesn't have quite the same depth of flavor that some of the other ones have got. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the heat down on this, bring it to a simmer, put the lid on, and we're going to let this go for at least an hour, probably two, maybe three. 
Um, if you don't want to do this on the stovetop, you can actually transfer this to an oven, um, set it about 300 degrees for about an hour and a half, two hours, uh, which will give you, again, a nice braise on that. Um, we don't have a ton of liquid in here. It's not covering anything. You can see it's just kind of up around the corners. So this is not a real brothy um, stew. Um, the mushrooms I'm using today are creminis, uh, very similar to a uh, white button, usually around the same price, easy to find. Main reason I like them is they got a little bit more color and a little bit deeper flavor, um, but not a dramatic difference. If you wanted to use a fancier mushroom, you can do that. So we got this thing turned down, we got the cover on. We're going to let this go for about an hour and a half. We're going to come back and check on it and see from there. Okay, so this has been going with the lid on, on low heat for about two hours. And uh, you certainly can enjoy it without thickening um, the sauce. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, thicken this lightly. So you can see that there's only a certain amount of liquid in there. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour off across the top. And then gently stir it in. You do this right, you won't wind up with lumps. You don't just want to dump it all in one spot though, because that way you will wind up with lumps. And then we're just gonna put the lid back on this thing and let it go for eh, about another 10, 15 minutes. Just wanna cook that long enough that the flour no longer tastes raw. I got some water on over here. Uh, we're gonna serve that over some um, egg noodles. Uh, you can do rice or potatoes or whatever, or just, you know, a nice piece of bread with it. But my family always put it with noodles. So uh, once this is ready, I'll show you how to plate it. Okay, so to go ahead and serve this, uh, we're going to go ahead and use a, uh, like a pasta bowl. I got um, some bu just buttered noodles down on the bottom here. Go ahead and just get yourself a nice ladle full of that on there. Uh, not absolutely necessary. A little piece of bread along with that is pretty tasty. Uh, one thing you're going to find is that bay leaf is still in there. Pick this out. This is not good eats. Um, this is a neat recipe. There's a bunch of things you can do with this. Uh, same general preparation works really well not only with beef. Uh, works good with pork. Works good with lamb. Works great with venison. Chicken drumsticks actually work pretty good with this too. Um, you know, if you don't like bacon, you know, you can use a little olive oil to brown the meat. Um, you know, if you'd rather go, you know, maybe you're not doing wine for some reason or other, use a little apple cider or a little beef broth. Um, this is a good one. Give it a try.